Hello everyone and welcome to another candidate interview in Chill TV's continuing coverage of the BC 2020 election presented by Simpson Notaries. Today I'd like to welcome Kelly Padden to the studio. Kelly's running for the NDP in the riding of Chilliwack, Kent. Welcome Kelly. Thanks so much, Clint. I wanted to uh, give you a chance to maybe talk uh, to the people watching uh, and tell us a little bit about yourself. You're relatively new to politics and uh, perhaps a new face. Uh, to Chilliwack voters, and I'd like to give you a chance to let people know who you are and why you uh, took on this madness of running for <laughs> provincial government. I really appreciate that. Thanks so much. I have heard from people that, you know, they don't know my name, they don't recognize my face, and so I really appreciate the opportunity to speak here with you and directly to people, um, just to explain a little bit about where I'm coming from for Chilliwack Kent. So as Clint said, my name's Kelly, and I am very proud to be the candidate for B the BC NDP for Chilliwack Kent. I've spent my career um, working both with my hands as well as with policy and government relations for people who are marginalized, for people who are potentially underserved and who need um, support and advocacy and, and really a way to have their voices amplified. So although there may be a lot of people um, who don't initially recognize me, who don't know my name, who haven't seen my picture in the paper, um, the families and the individuals that I've had the honor of working with and for, um, and the communities that I've served, they definitely know the work I've done. So I've spent my career supporting victims of crime, people with disabilities, uh, people who are struggling with mental health issues. Um, I've also worked with youth, developing employment, working with local employers to be, become more inclusive uh, employers, and I'm really proud of the impact that I've had locally and provincially. And I've also had the opportunity to work cross-ministry to improve policies and agreements that benefit people's everyday lives um, and support inclusion and access to community. Thanks very much. It's an interesting story and you, I know that people will know that you and I share an interest in working with marginalized populations. What do you think is needed in Chilliwack right now? We're facing, we've just gone through like a, a global pandemic. We're coming out the other side. We're not there yet. We're certainly seeing numbers that make us kind of uncomfortable, but I think uh, we will get through this. We see different plans for uh, that different parties are putting forward in terms of economic recovery. But what, what are you bringing to the table with respect to the riding of Chilliwack, Kent? What do you want to see in Chilliwack that the NDP can deliver? Absolutely. So I am a public servant, but I'm also a parent. I have two amazing teenagers who live in Chilliwack, Kent, who've spent their lives here, um, and we've chosen to make our home here. Uh, I think that one of the things that Chilliwack, Kent really needs, um, especially during the pandemic, but moving forward and, and in general as well, is representation that is truly inclusive, that hears the voices of everyone that we're charged to serve, um, and really brings those voices and those priorities to Victoria. I, I feel that the BC NDP have put forward an incredible plan to help people move forward in British Columbia, to help with economic recovery by investing in people, in small businesses, and small and medium-sized businesses, and making sure families have what they need. As a parent, part of what encouraged me to accept the BC NDP nomination was just understanding that all of the work and all of the decisions um, happening over the next four years have a direct impact not only on the opportunities and options for our community, but our individual families as well. I think that Chilliwack Kent needs a strong voice at, at the decision-making table. And I think that if elected, as part of John Horgan's government, I will be at the decision-making table representing Chilliwack Kent and what our priorities and needs are moving forward. Thanks, Kelly. There's, you, you mentioned marginalized populations, and certainly in the city of Chilliwack and many other communities in British Columbia, we have growing numbers of people that are living on the streets in our communities. Many of those people are challenged by uh, living with a mental illness. Many are living with addictions. What's the NDP's plan to move forward in this area? We've heard from uh, the Liberal uh, representative who says uh, we need to put all our efforts into abstinence and treatment for folks who are suffering with addic addictions. What's the NDP's plan? How is it different from what they're saying? 
There, there are some really substantial differences between what the BC Liberals and what the BC NDP are putting forward right now, and just makes me so proud to be part of John Horgan's team. One of the issues with homelessness, around homelessness, is there's not one single solution because there's not one single cause. John Horgan's put forward a platform to address things like affordability so that families and people, real people, can um, make sure that they can afford to, to live. Now, everybody deserves the dignity of a home, whether that person struggles with mental health issues, uh, whether they struggle with substance abuse issues, um, perhaps they have a disability, perhaps it's an affordability issue. There are so many different components, so many contributing factors to homelessness in our community that it's really critical to not try to just put everyone in a box and call it a cure. Um, I can't say enough how, how disappointing it is when people are further marginalized um, or stigmatized. And I think that John Horgan um, has a plan where for homelessness, we're working on affordability, we're working for, um, to increase housing, affordable housing, we're making sure that the people who need the help are getting the help as opposed to tax breaks for people who don't need the break. We're taking, um, you know, we're working really hard on the opioid crisis. We were seeing some progress pre-COVID, um, and we're, we're doubling down on, on making sure that that progress isn't lost. Any life lost is too much, um, but we understand that we need to take a, an intersectional approach to, to the health issue of substance use. Um, not criminalize it, but address it through prevention, protecting our kids, um, education. Yes, um, there, there's definitely treatment. Harm reduction is a big part of that as well. Uh, and then making sure that recovery is supported. And for those who struggle with mental, mental illness, this is a significant issue um, across BC, but definitely in Chilliwack, Kent. We need to have more services. We need to have um, social workers and mental health workers who are supporting our police so the police can focus on, on working on crime while we can support people um, with their needs, with their medical needs. This is a health issue um, just as much as it's anything else. And I just, I can't stress enough how proud I am that John Horgan's plan recognizes this. I'm, a, I'm aware that the city of Chilliwack has been pushing very hard for um, what they call uh, ACT teams yes. in the community, which uh, are ways to deliver mental health supports on the ground in communities. And they've been unsuccessful for uh, at least three years in getting any kind of notice where I see there's announcements uh, that have come that other communities are going to get those kind of resources. How is uh, Kelly Padden going to make the difference in getting the attention of government and making sure that Chilliwack gets its share of those services? Well, I think right off the bat, um, I, I've had the opportunity to work with ACT teams in Abbotsford while I was supporting families and individuals um, across the Fraser Valley. And it was an incredible experience. These teams are highly effective. So one of the things that I would definitely do, and one of the things that I'm the only person, the only candidate who can offer here, is I do have a voice at the decision-making table if elected by Chilliwack Kent. I would bring this, as well as many other concerns that we have, many other very specific needs that we have here in Chilliwack Kent, to make sure that these these, these needs are very clearly voiced, that I'm advocating strongly for them, and that I'm fighting where I need to fight. So this kind of program act, I would direct, I would be challenging, if not this, then what? And we need it now. Let's talk about uh, a little bit about transportation uh, as my last question. There's been a lot of discussion about uh, investments in transportation infrastructure, but at this point in time, I can see that it seems to all end at Whatcom Road. <laughs> Um, and there are transportation projects in Chilliwack that I think, uh, and in Agassiz and uh, in other areas, that are going to be necessary in the coming years. Uh, what are some of those projects in your mind, and how are you going to see those uh, presented or put at the table? Absolutely. So I do think that the modernizing and widening of Highway 1 that um, the BC NDP has put forward, as well as the BC Liberals, um, is critical. It will definitely have a very positive impact for, for us in Chilliwack, Kent. That being said, um, I believe one of my colleagues said, you know, the Fraser Valley doesn't end um, in Abbotsford. <laughs> so I understand that people here in Chilliwack, Kent have ideas and are advocating strongly when I speak with people for things like light rail. There was a conversation at some point about maybe we should be advocating for SkyTrain. I'm not 100% sure about how people in Chilliwack, Kent feel about that at at the moment and how that would affect our climate 
plan and our, our local, our beautiful local environment. Um, but I do know that light rail is a hot topic and it is definitely something that I would be bringing up at that decision making table as part of John Horgan's government. So let's look ahead just a little bit and say uh, Kelly Padden is uh, successful and your party forms government. What are the areas that you would want to make a difference in? Here in Chilliwack, Kent, I think that the, the areas that absolutely need a voice right away are just an inclusive approach, um, a, a, a non-marginalizing approach to homelessness, our, our housing plan here. Um, again, infrastructure is critical here in Chilliwack, Kent, and I think we would really benefit from having someone who's directly at the table when those conversations are being had, challenging, um, you know, with my, potentially with my colleagues um, in Victoria, where Chilliwack Kent needs these things, um, and this is part of moving everyone forward. This is part of moving British Columbians forward, because we are a beautiful and and impactful area. Um, I I do understand that um, I have I have some things to learn. I need to learn which priorities people would would want first. Um, but I am aware that between addictions, between homelessness, I know there are concerns around health, education, definitely infrastructure and transportation. I'm hearing things about water supply. These are all critical issues that need to be brought forward and they need to be brought forward in a place that will be heard. And so if I think this is a, a fantastic opportunity for Chilliwack Kent to have someone directly on the team that's making these decisions. Um, and that is me. Thank you so much for that, Kelly, and thanks for joining us today. Thanks so much and for having me. Thanks to everybody that's watching. We're going to be providing more interviews through the election season, so stay tuned to Chill TV. Be sure to mark your calendars for Chill TV's October 24th BC 2020 election night coverage, presented by Simpson Notaries, starting at 7.30, about 30 minutes before the polls closed. And at that time, I'm going to be joined by Bud Mercer, who's a local City of Chilliwack councillor, and Don Lane, of course, who's a fixture on Chill TV, and a number of guests that we'll be announcing this week. So please stay tuned.